Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 with a test match of a mod for Acron. They're, we're kind of working on a bit of a community mod right now for Acron because the devs are they were doing stuff, and that has been a passion in a while. People are getting impatient, so Cron Aberrant decided, hey, let's make a balance mod. And that seemed like an interesting idea. So now we're testing it, and I'm just going to observe and stream. It's a three-player FFA. It's going to be on Abram's research station. And right now, Nail and Cronabrant have connected. Vermind is the third player. He will be connecting fairly soon after. So we've seen this map in other games, but it's not really been shown much, so I'll just go over it quickly. There is, in the bottom left corner, the bottom right corner, I guess, yeah, I can't go on the mini-map during the pre-game. Here, here. So bottom right corner, bottom left corner, and top, there are star locations. So Vermind's at the top. I actually got to switch to the non-tournament display, so I can just show all three. So Vermind is at the top, he's playing Vekir, and we have Nail, or Carnabra, sorry, that's red in the bottom left corner, he's playing Grekum, and let's see, Nail is still paused at the early start of the game, he is playing CISO, so he is going to be playing, well, he looks like he's playing CISO, let's just go back, double check, yes, so we are having all three races being played, so the main change this mod does is anti-air units, the Low tier anti air units like Cephes, Mechs, and Teth Pulsers now have much higher range. It's about 8 higher range, it's roughly artillery range. Whereas before their range was fairly small, usually 15 to 17 units, which was slightly smaller than their sight range. For reference, the sight range of the Shinvir right now is about 15 units, so that was how long they had. Most bombers also have a range of 15 units, so they were only slightly higher range than bombers, and that didn't help much. So the idea is to make them be able to hit bombers from far away. Then the other change is that higher tier anti-air, like Octoligos, Teth Halkians, and Heavy Tanks, they are, or, Teth Halkians is very here, Heavy Tanks is CISO, they have now splash damage, really high splash damage in the air. They will be able to hit an air unit and basically the adjacent three or four other air units, which is a huge amount of damage, which allows them to take care of swarms fairly easily. At least that's the idea. We'll see pretty soon. So now both players, or sorry, all players, are going for fairly heavy economy builds, fairly heavy LC builds. I'm going to fast forward to catch up to most of them because Crown Avern's actually further in the future. He is about a minute into the future. He has saturated his entire base except for two QP spots. And Nail has seen him. So Nail has, sorry, not Crown Avern, Vermind. Sorry, Vermind is playing. All right, Crown Avern is correct. So Vermind has gotten everything. Crown Avern has not yet gotten everything. He is currently in the present. He is definitely doing a similar strategy though. And Nail getting an importer a little bit after the 210 mark, so about the 2 minute mark, he's getting an importer. And now getting QPRP to the 216 mark. And Vermine just jumping back. Looks like he was probably switching around how his Shinbeer and Tethbeer scouted out. Or, no, stopping him entirely. So he is echoing out his Shinbeer and Tethbeer scouts that he had sent before. I didn't really mention that because that, that's a really typical thing to do. And then. So his main base, he does have... Well, he has a foundation that's heavily damaged. His depot is coming up as well. And the foundation here is being used for an aerial control center. And at Tet... No, it's a Shinbeer. No, it's Ionbeer. Whoops. Wait. Here I put all this effort into making the differentiable. Anyway, the... <laughs> so Vermind has his vehicles getting set up. And very quickly getting air as well. While it looks like Nail is... What is Nail up to? Nail is actually building an expansion in the middle between him and Vermind at the... This would be the 2 o'clock expansion. Vermind, however, is going to the 10 o'clock expansion. Let's see, just scouting out there for now. Let's see, double checking. At the 507 mark, he hasn't really changed much there. He is focused on getting Zion Pulsers and a Teth Pulser and a Shinturcher. While Kron Aberrant is in the present and is getting Octopod, he is getting Spire and... Will getting will be getting air units of his own very quickly. Though I'm not sure if Carnarvon is going for air units in order to get air, or if he's going to air units to get Lego class to get Octoligos for anti-air. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when he actually starts to build up. He is getting a ton of Seppies though, so he's definitely preparing for air assault. And right now, well, okay, actually, Nail is focused on the 250 mark or so, but a minute down, he is getting mechs. He is, so all three players are going for anti-air except. Looks like Vermine is going for a Chrono Rush with one Shin Turcher, a Teth Pulser, and a bunch of Zion Pulsers. And I don't think either of the other players are really prepared for this, but Vermine hasn't...
gone forward with this yet. Let's see if he's actually going for anything. He's getting Hawking Class right now. He's not. I'm surprised he hasn't sent anything back yet. He has the QP to do so, but he hasn't actually sent his units back. Just double checking further in the past. Sorry, but this is a double check about every 20 seconds or so in the past. No, he has not actually set up any chronoports at this point. Now, Nail, on the other hand, is continuing to build up his main base. He's building up his expansion as well. So Nail has the most map presence, but he hasn't really done anything with it yet. Chrono average is about a minute in the future, about the 53 mark. Oh, jump back slightly. He is he is getting a far pod. He is getting two sepi pods, so he's focused on the anti-air a bit, but he's it's not clear if he's going to be going for Octoligos or just focusing on an air force of his own. He has the sepis for anti-air, jumping back about a minute and a half. He is getting a far pod even earlier now. And this is the same time that design pulses are starting to be built for Vermind. And Vermind still hasn't really... He's only used a slipgate for teleportation to expand to the 10th block expansion. He is setting up a Zion Pulsar and two Zion... Sorry, two Zion Turchers. Sorry. He is setting up two Zion Turchers to attack Nail behind his 2 o'clock expansion. And Nail is getting a bunch of infantry. I'm surprised he's going for this. I don't know why he's doing that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. About three minutes prior to that, he is actually going to be going for... He is not going to be going for that ultimately. He's going to be going for a factory-based strategy. Although he is still building infantry more than I would have expected. Getting an ATHC in his base at the 348 mark, that will be useful defense, but really against Zion Turchers, it's not the best defense. I mean, Zion Turchers, well, you need detectors, so special ops or Tornados, and Tornados actually do a pretty good job just fighting Zion Turchers on their own, so that's fine. But, let's see, Vermind is, he has this set of units right now. Let's see, he's getting the Zion Turchers, oh, see, so guess the Zion Turchers now, I guess he's chronoporting them back in order to attack. That's no, he's not. That was not. That was Chronal. That was not Chronoported. So Nail has plenty of time to prepare for this. He's probably going to be doing so. It looks like he's. Well, actually, doesn't, doesn't look like he is doing so. It looks like he has. He's getting another armory, but he's not really getting any. It's hard to tell. Really, like I said, at this point in time, it's hard to tell. He only has one factory. He, this factory he hasn't gone to yet. His timeline is a bit behind. Front Albert was focused long near the present, and he is. He does have an Octopod in Progen mode, but he will need a Sepipod and a Farpod in Progen mode in order to get Octoligos, and I don't know if he's planning on doing that. And it doesn't look like he's actually really affected this part of the timeline, so that is hard to say still. He did get two Farpods, two Sepipods, though, which means he's likely not just going to be focusing on legal class units, he's probably going to be focusing on getting, well, getting the Farpod and Sepipod as actual attacking units. Now, Nail has also, at the 535 mark, gotten the 6 o'clock expansion partly under his control. And this is, of course, Vermind is going to be attacking... Or was going to be attacking around here. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so this is the 730 mark, which, which is when Vermind starts attacking. And, actually, I put a bookmark there, so it's clear. And Nail is about 3 minutes behind that. He still doesn't have a lot of preparations for it. He's getting more RPs. He's definitely investing more in that base, but he's also gotten the 6 o'clock expansion as backup, I suppose. But he isn't really focusing on that too much, surprisingly enough. Or at least he isn't focusing on it this meta time, but he's definitely... He's far back in the past, and I don't really see... He has hardly any orders left. I see one order out of four. Yeah, he's got hardly any orders left at this point in time. He should be jumping towards the present pretty soon, or closer to the present pretty soon. He does have a Tornod. Okay, there we go. Defenster and Tornod. So he is prepared for this. Vermind is also going back in the past. He has chronoported back some units. He has chronoported back units to deal with, look like, oh, the ATHC that came back here. There was an ATHC that came back from Nail. And it seems that Vermind decided chronoporting back and slaughtering it was the best way to go. It seems a little disproportionate, but, eh, why not? Mind you, this is an unplayable pass, which means that Vermine does not have a lot of control over this, or near the unplayable pass. He has, well, he has zero orders right now, and he needs half of his chrono energy to get an order. He has one order left. He could send the hierarchy leader in to attack someone at this point in time, but really, I'm surprised he didn't go for more of a dedicated chrono rush. Farpod coming from Chrono Abron to attack the six o'clock expansion, while a much stronger attack. This looks like the yeah, this is the post chrono port attack from wow from Vermine. So he's attacking the. Defense turret, he's attacking the front, he's, he has lost all of his anti-air, however, the Zion Pulse is going to attack air, Test Pulse, or sorry, Test Veer is trying to attack the front, is dealing some damage to it, but it isn't enough. Oh, what the, oh, it's discontinuity, so, 
Nail has not propagated this yet, but he will be propagating it very soon, so the Tornod... Actually, the Tornod's almost dead. Despite the fact that there's only Veer Clutch attacking it, it has died, so... The base is still being very heavily damaged. Nail is going to need to do quite a bit to defend it. He's building another defense turret, and at the same time, a 6 o'clock expansion is being attacked by a Farpon and Spot from Carnabrant. Carnabrant getting himself, well, almost a Podclass Triad, a Podclass Duo. Further in the future, he does have... No, he's not have a Podclass Triad, but he is getting Steffi Ligo. He may be getting more Steffi Ligos later on. It's hard to say, but he is definitely getting one now at the 704 mark. And the... Main base of Nail, however, has been completely unmolested, and he does have a lot of resources coming in from there. He also has a ton of resources in the bank, mostly LC. And a Marine is... Well, it seems indecisive about what to do. And here's a Chronoport from... That is a Chronoport from Burmind, 730 mark. Right before the Zion Church's attack, so... It looks like a path has been cleared, except the Tornad is still here, so the Zion Church will still come back here, and will likely be slaughtered by the Tornad. But that Tornad... Might actually not be that much of a problem. No, the Tornado is focused too much on the Zion Veer. Zion Church will be attacking it very heavily. At the 744 mark where Nail is focused, he is not changing the target on the Tornado, but it doesn't matter. The Zion, Pulse, Zion Churches aren't even cloaked. They're coming in completely uncloaked. The Tornado itself is useful as an anti air, or as an anti ground unit, a bomber, but it's going to be killed before Zilla deal any significant damage. So those Zion Churches, cloaked or not, are dealing a ton of damage. And Nail is getting very heavily attacked, however, he does have, like I said, a main base, which is completely unmolested, and his expansions, yeah, they are being heavily attacked. He does have a Martan coming out of his Macrofabs, though. Doesn't look like more than one. He really should be going towards the future a bit more. As you can see, two minutes later, Vermind will end up having Torna, or sorry, Teth Halkians easily take care of the base, and will also have a Zion Pulsar in the back of Nail's base. Crown however, has five Seppi Pods, uh, five Seppi Legos, sorry, not Seppi Pods, Seppi Pods aren't nearly as scary. Five Seppi Ligos, and... I don't know why this Marine is just hanging out here. That's kind of bizarre. Anyway. So, five Seppi Ligos coming in, and... Zion Turcher will, like... Was scouting the 6 o'clock expansion. We'll find the Seppi Pot and Farpod that have destroyed Nail's expansion. Jumping back a minute or so, Nail's expansion is dead. Definitely dead near the unplayable past. So... That was a small expansion, not too much. The expansion in the 2 o'clock position, however, is much more important and it looks like Nail has managed to take care of the Zion Turchers that were attacking it, using the Martank and the Tornado to detect. So these Zion Turchers are going to be going down, which is kind of surprising, the Zion Turchers are actually strong as Martanks, but of course if they can't even get in range to attack, it doesn't matter. So ultimately the Martank able to destroy the Zion Turchers. Nicely done defense by Nail. And it looks like Vermind is now being the center of attention, and ATC is still in the back, or another ATC I'd rather has gone to the back of Vermind's base and is harassing him. So, Nail trying to do what he can to harass away from this. Getting a couple macro fabs as well, so definitely trying to get his macro up, but like I said, he really should be going further toward, once he gets this up, macro from about here, maybe, or so. I mean, even this is kind of iffy, but he can macro from here, and then just jump forward as the green time wave goes along. That would work. But he's not doing it. He's, he's adamantly right next to the unplayable past edge, which really is a mistake for macroing. It's, he's using a ton of chrono energy just to do basic macro commands, not even re-microing. Back to Cronabrant. Cronabrant's Farpod is coming into the base, is cloaked, coming into Vermine's base. He has Teth Turcher, a Shin Pulsar, and two Teth Halkians coming in. The, far the Foundation has detected, but the Farpod is able to go around. Vermind, focus further in the future. Having to defend his base against a ton of Seppi Ligos coming in. And this is where we'll see how the balance model turns out. However, the Teth Halkians, there's far fewer Teth Halkians than there are Seppi Ligos. So the Seppi Ligos are taking splash damage from the Seppi Well, they were taking splash damage from it until it died, and then it stopped dealing any damage at all. Things rarely deal damage when they're dead. But it is, and that Teth Halkin is no exception. So, the Teth Halkin, not alive anymore. Now, see Vermine jumping back a bit further. He'll need to build more Teth Halkins, probably, and possibly some Teth Pulsars as well. He is chronoporting them back, actually. He's chronoported back his units. Well, chronoported his units, presumably back, since that's how most players chronoport. And yes, he is chronoporting his units back. Calm the blue time wave. He is not doing anything with them yet. So I imagine you'll probably end up using them with the other units, having them skip towards the base as the Zebi Ligos attack. It probably won't be enough to defend against the Zebi Ligos, but we'll find out soon enough. And here, this is the Zebi Ligos attack, this is at the 11 weight mark, so the blue time wave is going to have to bring it along. That's when we'll see what happens, and it looks like the defense has not been triggered yet. Like I said, still about two minutes from the point of the blue time wave's current position, but actually the blue time wave is pushing along a bit. So I'd say in about 30 seconds we'll find out. 
Regardless, further in the future, well, in the playable past, rather, the Chronabric is sending his RPs to the south expansion, and the tip of the attack has happened. The blue time move, however, has not passed, so we don't know what ultimately will happen there. And Nail is definitely focused on getting a lot of infantry. He has some heavy tanks built up. He is actually in the present. He is probably macroing in the present. Let's see. He does have a lot. Yes, he is. He was definitely macroing in the present. Very well done, Nail. You macroed in the present. I'm. I'm glad. Glad to see it. Now, Cron Aberrant, however, now let's deal with the blue time wave, which hasn't really changed much. Ultimately, it appears that the Tethalkians actually never came back here, but there still are more Tethalkians. So, regardless, that Chronoport did nothing but the Tethalkians, although it would have helped had Sedalegos attacked the main base. And it looks like it did help against the Faropod that was here earlier, but not by much, although... Oh, no, that's not... That's a Chronofrag. <laughs> These two are at one health because they got Chronofrag, not because of anything else. Anyway, Vermine does have a fairly formidable force of Tethalkians to defend, but he has lost his expansion in the meantime. It wasn't a huge expansion, but it still was an expansion. Nail still has the most map presence across the map. Crown Aberrant's trying to do what he can to seize map control with the Sebi Ligos. And getting his expansions, getting his RPs where he can. But really, Nail is the one who really has map control. He has two bases. His main base, however, Elsie is half exhausted. Ooh, not even half exhausted. Almost completely exhausted. And his QP, not so much, but even then, he still has a lot of LC in the bank. I'm just surprised he's not building more tanks and everything else. I mean, he's building a lot of Mar tanks, which are definitely LC sinks, but he really should be building more heavy tanks. I don't know if he's aware of what Crown Aberrant is doing. I kind of doubt it, but he should be building more heavy tanks, and if he was aware, he would definitely build more heavy tanks, because that would be the answer to all these Sebi Ligos. Like I said before, the balance mod does change that Sebi Ligos are going to be more vulnerable to, well, Tethalkians, heavy tanks, stuff, because the splash damage is going to be much higher. Now, Crown Aberrant's Sebi Ligo Ball is coming along and going towards Nail's base. Half of them have stopped an RP of Vermines, and the other half is able to go to Nail's base. And a Twin Mar is also being... has also been constructed. I'm not sure why there's so much focus on the Mar tanks. I'm really quite surprised Nail has not focused more on producing tanks, producing heavy tanks. But no, he is completely focused on producing Mars and variants thereof, which is surprising given that Mar tanks are almost useless against air. Here's another heavy tank coming up, though. So, Nail has produced a couple of heavy tanks. He would need about, I'd say, 8 to 10 heavy tanks, I think is what we were... I was talking to Crown Aberrant about the mod on IRC before, and he basically pointed out that it was pretty much... Well, it was... Sorry. I he pointed I pointed out that it was pretty much a good idea to have somewhere around the same cost effectiveness, except maybe slightly higher cost effectiveness for the anti-air than the air, because the air has mobility. I'm not sure what he ultimately decided on in terms of how many units should be able to kill a group, but my guess is that he probably decided on what we were discussing, which is about 8 to 12 for a group of 10. Say, 10 Sebi Ligos should be countered by a group of about maybe 8 to 10 Heavy Tanks, or 8 to 10 Octoligos, or 10 to 12 Tethalkins. We'll find, well, we won't really find out anytime soon, because the Heavy Tank itself is not in position, and Nail is not in a position where he's actually able to attack. Twin Mars, of course, can't deal enough damage to the air units to actually make any difference. And there's a lot of infantry coming out. I'm a bit surprised at all this infantry. Not necessarily a bad idea. It's just, I'm surprised he has a lot of infantry anyway. And he hasn't really done much with it. Jumping forward towards the present. He is actually now attacking. He is marching towards Kron Aberrant's base. And in the meantime, Vermont has managed to defend... Well, not even defend. He doesn't even have to defend his expansion. He's getting his Tentalkians towards the expansion. Seeing there's nothing there. Seems to be a bit surprised about it. But that's that's what it is. There's nothing there. Kron and Vermont's realizing that there has been a lot of movement. Now Nail, of course, knows about the Civic Legos. He needs to build more heavy tanks. He has two heavy tanks in separate bases. He needs more heavy tanks, so I think the infantry might actually have a chance since they are not... The Seven Ligos don't deal splash damage, so the infantry actually isn't necessarily in a bad position. That being said, if Octoligos come up, or Octopods come up, Octoligos have been changed to have splash, and I think Octopods might have as well, but definitely Octoligos. Now, Octo's coming in to attack the heavy tanks, and the heavy tank is actually not attacking oddly enough. I'm not sure why the heavy tank isn't attacking. Twin Mars should also be attacking the Twin Mar. Ah, here it is. So Mars and Twin Mars are actually attacking the Octos. And the Octos are taking quite a bit of damage to die. This is normal. Mars do not deal a huge amount of damage to Octos. In order for Octos to actually count for them. But it doesn't matter. The Twin Mar will be dealing a ton of damage. Still a ton of damage to everything, so it does not matter at all. And now the Twin Mar and Mars have gotten rid of the Octos, so Crown Aberrant Managed to kill one of the heavy tanks, however, and Nail does not have enough heavy tanks. He's building more tanks, but he does not have enough heavy tanks, and he has very little chrono energy to build heavy tanks with. 
and like he really isn't focusing up on macro near the present, or in or near the present, because that would give him more chrono energy to macro with. And it looks like I was kind of wrong. The infantry are not taking splash damage, but they're still not surviving very long. This typically deal enough damage that the infantry can hardly hit before they get killed. And like I said, I'm just surprised he went for mass infantry rather than really testing out the heavy tanks. He didn't have to kill a couple less seven legos. Looks like about three seven legos so far, which isn't terribly bad. But he still lost all of his infantry in the process. Well, most of it is infantry. Some of them got distracted in the meantime because they just got killed. Or the leader got killed, so the rest of them didn't come along, which is probably fine. I'm just really surprised he hasn't built a ton of factories. Start building tanks and heavy tanks, just pumping them out. I just found that very surprising. His choice of strategy seems very counter to what the reality is of what his opponent is doing. Anyway, jumping forward a bit. Kron Aberrant at the 1706 mark has managed to secure the 6 o'clock expansion, so all three players have an expansion except Vermind has probably the weakest hold on his expansion, and he also has the... Whoa, he has very little LC left. I don't know if he's... I think he may be planning to go for a Chronoport attack and win that way? Because really with the QP and LC counts he has, it's probably the best thing he could do at the moment, or at least get use that to secure stronger expansion, or at least... Maybe get a Zion Veer back there, build a couple RPs or something. I don't know. He really needs more resources. He needs more money. He's running out of LC. I know this looks like a lot, but that's only a couple Tethalicans, really. And the Sibylligo Ball is quite secure at the 6 o'clock expansion. Nail macroing further towards the present. Getting a bunch of tanks. Needs to make them heavy tanks if he can, although he's not actually focused at this point in time. He does. Those tanks were, however, built near the Unplayable Past, and so he does have them throughout the timeline. Like I said, I am surprised he hasn't made them heavy tanks yet. Because that would be the way to go. And here goes another Chronoport. So, Vermine has done another Chronoport. Looks like he will be Chronoporting back to somewhere around the 612 mark. He is teleporting them towards Chronoport's base. And will be assaulting Chronoport in the Unplayable Past. So, there they go. So, Chronoport is, while he's attacking the. Well, while he's getting his heavy attacked by the infantry. His main base will be attacked at the 1612 mark, or 1622 mark, by Vermind, and this is of course when Nail is building all these tanks. So now this is going to be very powerful because there is very little defense. However, the Octopods have dealt much damage. Octopods have been changed that they have an ammo. When the ammo runs out, they can't attack, but they recharge ammo once every three seconds or so. They can attack with the ammo once every, well, more than once a second but they cannot attack without ammo, which means they have just lost all their ammo, lost much of their ability to attack. But, what is this? It looks like Cryonabrant has managed to stop some of the chronoporting. Yes, yes, the sub have come in and have stopped the chronoport attack before it happens, damaging a ton of the units in the process, and severely reducing the strength of the uppercut, so he won't have much of a problem surviving that uppercut now. This blue time wave carries along the result of that. One Shin Turcher managing to get through, stay alive for a while, but ultimately, not much getting through. So, Kron Aberrant successfully defending in the playable past against an unplayable past attack. I very much like to see that, although, as much as I also like to see Sefi Ligos getting themselves killed and a bit of a shift, but it looks like none of the players really went heavily for anti air. Nail is getting more heavy tanks now. He is definitely focusing on that, finally. And he is also. Let's see, is he getting anything else? He's not getting frigates or anything, which is fine. I want to see ground based anti air do well. He does have a half a dozen heavy tanks near the present, and actually even a minute in the past, so... He will have half a dozen heavy tanks to deal with the Sepik Ligos, which by the time that it comes up, actually might be enough. Kron Aberrant, however, hasn't been producing a whole lot, and he could definitely produce more Sepik Ligos if he wanted to. He simply hasn't gone around to it. He's been focused... Actually, he has the Chrono Energy to do it, too. He just hasn't been really focused on that. And Nail, of course, is focused on macro. He is... Or focused on the present, not necessarily macro, but he is definitely focused on the present. Getting a ton of infantry still, I'm just surprised at the amount of infantry he's getting. It's it seems like an odd choice, but I guess that would have that works. So Vermind has essentially been eliminated now. Sorry, I missed that. Seven Ligos coming in and are gonna be attacking the main base. So Seven Ligos attacking the main base, and Vermind trying to attack this is the well, I guess the last of the uppercut they attempted to do. Getting heavily damaged by the octopods. And of course, Sebi Ligos are attacking the main base heavily as well. So, right now, actually, Nail would have a great opportunity for attacking with his infantry or attacking with his Mar tanks towards the main base. Of, of Kron Aberrant, that is. Sebi Ligos are also being occupied, which means it'd be harder for 
to get through, but this is the unplayable task, mind you, which means that Nail has already lost the opportunity to do this. So, Crown Avern has eliminated Vermine's base. Vermine has some RPs, but that's about it. And it looks like he still has some power usage, but I don't see why. He's negative three power, he has no vehicles on the field, and RPs don't really count. So, Vermine has surrendered at this point. What the? Oh, oh crap. Great. Well, anyway, that uh, that's a bug that... Okay, that's the second time that's happened. I apologize for that. That was kind of annoying. Okay, that was just really annoying. I'm not sure why that happened. That was just dumb. So anyway... Apparently there's now a bug where people leaving the game will crash the entire game. I think... It's a nail issue, to be honest. I, I don't want to be too cruel, but I, it seems like... I think nail was hosting both times. Here, I'm just going to bring up the IRC so we can actually see what's going on. Anyway. His nail is actually running Linux, and the Linux build's apparently a bit experimental. So it's possible that it's a Linux issue, since I don't think it's happened for anyone else hosting. It's just rather odd that it does happen at all. And it's very new. I've never seen it until very, very, very recently. Which is why I'm thinking it might be a Linux thing, or might... Because that's the only thing I can think of that would be separate. Because I'm running Windows right now, and most people are running Windows. <laughs> it looks like Nail was, yeah, Nail did not expect mass Seppi Legos. No, no, you did not. You had enough heavy tanks to take it out near the end, though, unfortunately, they, for the crash. But yeah, you had enough Seppi Legos, or sorry, you could have taken it out. Like, Nail was in a good spot right there, so that, that kind of sucks. So yeah, that was an interesting game. Not sure why that bug happened. So anyway, if we're gonna have another, I'd like to see you one v one. Because it'd be more interesting to see a one v one since it's a lot easier to figure out what's going. Because I mean, the free for all is fun and all, but. It's it's kind of hard to really judge in terms of balance because there's a lot of... I mean, okay, it's a small free-for-all, so politics doesn't come into it, but it's still a question of who attacks who first and you know, who you want to attack. There is still sort of decision-making on who to attack, not just how to build and how to attack, and really the game is balanced competitively for 1v1. Excuse me one second. So if we can get, uh, are anyone playing? Anyone playing? I'm playing one v one. Is there one v one being set up? No. So Nail's looking for one v one, and not sure if anyone else is going to be up for that. Crown Aberrant's busy. Uh, I'll join the game anyway, and then uh, select player. Uh. Okay, that's bizarre. Okay, Crown Iron has joined, so I guess he is still good for playing. So we will be starting this fairly shortly, I imagine. I'm I'm ready. So let's go. This is a two-player game now on Abrams, which should be interesting. Oh, 
Oh, okay, that's what Nail was trying to do, was tank riding. Huh. Okay, so he was trying to actually get the tanks to ride to energy to ride in the tanks rather than just uh, Okay, that's kind of odd. I don't know if that would happen. It's no. Oh. Takano so doesn't really like the idea of infantry and tanks, however, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that explains why there were so many infantry. Because I was kinda get I was kinda wondering why the infantry. It didn't really make much sense for me, but that that works. I, I can see that. So, next match is going to be once again Abrams. Just nail in Cron Aberrant this time, no Vermind. So, oh, I can't switch that yet. I have to wait for the players to load, and then we can switch to the tournament display. DRC up for now. Oh, okay. Turn game started. Switch to tournament display. Oh, I guess not an angle pants. Anyway, no matter. The names aren't as fancy, but it still works. So, Crown Abbott is in the bottom right corner. He is she. Uh, he is playing Greckham, and Nail is in the bottom left corner playing CISO. So it's a Greckham versus CISO match this time, and nothing's coming up. I'll bring up the IRC if something interesting is said. But, for now, Nail is starting up, he is getting... Sorry, Crown Aberrant is starting up actually doing stuff, you can see what he's doing. Getting, looks like a standard economy build. Two Octos, three Octos on LC, get a fourth Octo on LC. Not sure where the fifth Octo is yet, oh he doesn't have the resources for it yet, but he will pretty soon. And... Then, once that happens, we will... Well, like, that's the standard start. Nail is going for, let's see, his own standard start. Six... I'll do that with one marine, though, interestingly enough. And the SOP is going towards the 12 o'clock expansion rather than going towards the 4 o'clock expansion, or 4 o'clock main, sorry, 12 o'clock main rather than the 4 o'clock main. And then he will be likely building another RP pretty soon. His RPs are almost done for, yeah, 50, 50 LC, so he'll be building an RP right now. And Cron Aberrant building his RPs, finally getting his Octos up and getting the RPs going. So he'll have seven RPs on LC, and so will Nail. And Nail has enough for another RP, he's building an eighth. So both players are going heavily for LC RPs. Just gonna jump a bit towards the future, since both players are heavy in the future. Nail is going for... Actually, is Nail doing a lot in the future? He's looking at the future, but he's not really playing a lot in it. Crown on the 250 mark has two reefs, an octopod being built up very quickly, two QPRPs, and eight LCRPs, so very heavily going for his economy. Nail, on the other hand, is focused a bit more on the past. Looks like he's double checking his scouting. He realizes that his scout is wrong, but it's not like he's changing how he's scouting at all. He's. He is. No, he was using two Marines for the RPs. He wasn't using just one. I was mistaken. But he doesn't seem to be echoing out the scout at all, which is interesting to see. Anyway, Cron Aberrant is at the 352 mark. He does have a fairly large army with. An Octopod, two, oh, Octopod, two Seppies, two Faros, going towards the 12 o'clock expansion, or 12 o'clock base. Probably not realizing that Nail is actually in the 8 o'clock base, but he will likely be changing his course once he realizes this. Because he has not scattered out yet. Definitely going heavy for the Octopods. Very heavy for the Octopods. Three Octopods. Don't usually see that. He's also not gotten, is at the 410 mark, he hasn't gotten advanced structures yet. So he's very dedicated to the Octopod attacks. And that's cool, I like to see, I mean, okay, obviously this is very new mod, just sort of playing around with it, seeing what'll happen, various unit combinations. But hopefully that sort of thing will happen where Grekham decides that Octopods are a viable strategy. And that will be interesting to see. I don't know if that would actually end up happening, but that would be still interesting to see. And Stokhanov seems to think that Grekham Ground is faster. I, I don't think the speed was changed. I think it was just the attack speed with the ammo mechanic, and just jumping forward. For Nail, Special Ops from Nail is seeing the Grecan base, the Crown Aberrant has been seen, and Marine is going towards the 12 o'clock expansion, which is probably a bad idea. Really, this expansion right here at the 10 o'clock position would be the best, sorry, 6 o'clock expansion. The 10 o'clock expansion would be the best one to go for, or the 12 o'clock main. And Importer is up, and so are 10 RPs on LC, and RP on QP at the 309 mark. Crown Aberrant is at the 57 mark, he's at 3 minutes ahead, and he has... A lot of, yes, this two Octopods, Octos, Faro, Seppies, 
lots of ground units, and of course special ops this is from the Echo, so really that's that special ops isn't ultimately there. And Crown Aberrant getting his forces again at the 322 mark. No, he hasn't changed the order to attack the 12 o'clock expansion. I'm kind of surprised about that. Unless he's deciding to try to secure the 12 o'clock main, I don't see why he is going to be going for that. Special Ops, this is when we see it, the 27 mark. Nail getting a factory this time around and getting more TPRPs as well. So just double checking his economy. And Burmine pointing out that his the last game, the Octopod Defense just killed everything, which is true, it did kind of kill everything. But then that's kind of what the Octopods are like. I mean, the Octopods now, like I said, the ammo mechanics, so they're able to snipe things. Deal, like I said, as you can see, just very rapid rate of fire when it has ammo. When it doesn't have ammo, it has to wait for ammo to recharge, and it's kind of slow. It's about three seconds for each ammo charge. And now Crown Avern is going for the expansion as well. The Marine here has not done much, and this base has not been either secured or assaulted because there's no base to assault here anyway. And it looks like Crown Aberrant is now moving his forces south. His south expansion is being attacked by the Marine, and jumping back a bit towards Nail. Nail is getting himself machinery and his factory forces up, which means he'll be able to get the factory up fairly... well, fa get tanks and such up. Could be useful. Macrofab might be a bit more useful against the Octopods to get Mar tanks, or just get... Let's see... Octopods won't be great anti-air. That is one thing to point out. Octopods are not great anti-air, and there's no air yet. Aseppies would be good, but Octopods wouldn't be. So air wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea. Be interesting to see how that works. I'd like to see Nail try it just because I'm curious to see how it would work. Uh, oh, it looks like. Whoa, it looks like there's been a lot of things undone here. Apparently, Crown Abbott undid a lot of stuff in that point in time because that's what happens when you undo it. It'll, it'll jump like that. Because the observer is not supposed to propagate anything, so. Um, yeah, Vermont's curious about vector units with long lines of sight. The best bet is either a comm hub, which is, of course, a building. Or, I guess, I don't know, I think the longest line of sight is about 20 or so, which most Halcyon classes have, if I recall correctly, offhand. Anyway, Dogbot's still going up. Crown Aberrant doesn't seem to have changed... No, he, is, he has changed it. Okay, good. So he has definitely changed it. But, at this point, one Octobot is going towards the 12 o'clock... Sorry, the 6 o'clock base. I don't know why I'm getting my clocks confused. But Nail has given up on that. He is going for the 10 o'clock... Yes, 10 o'clock expansion, and he does have that pretty well set up. Not secured so much, but he does have it set up. He does have a factory there as well, so I'll be able to build units. And the factory he has right now, building Tornads, not a bad idea. Getting defense turrets as well near the RPs, also a good idea. So he does have Tornads, and that will help. And he has a special up also on the beach area. Just double check, make sure that nothing comes, or see if anything comes down the side. But the special ops doesn't really have the vision to see that. I'm not sure what Nail is planning to do, if he's planning on doing an ambush with that Special Ops, or if he's, if he did mean to have it for scouting, a comm center down there would be brilliant. Special Ops, not so much, though. And the Octopod does see that the 6 o'clock expansion is completely undefended, so gonna go for it. And here's a comm, sorry, not comm hub, comm center. So the comm center is going to be up, this is when the Tornado we saw, it. the initial Tornado is up, Mech is coming up afterwards. Not much point against this configuration, but Nail does not know this yet. And Nail actually jumping back closer to the Implodable Past. He doesn't look like he's really changing much in there. He does have an armory being set up in his expansion at the 10 o'clock position. And of course, 6 o'clock position is not at all being contested by Nail. So Crown Aberrant is able to come in. He's swooping in from, with some Octopods. Going forward, the attack is going to be initiating. Seppi is building a reef right next to the opening, so the reef will be able to attack. Octopod doing what he can to snipe out, trying to attack the Macrofab. Martan getting heavily damaged before it's really able to deal a lot of damage itself. And the Tornod, however, is going to be able to do quite a bit. No Seppies. The Faros are the only effective anti-air right now. Octopods aren't great anti-air. They are doing what they can against the buildings, which is actually quite a bit. They have health Macrofab, which is not... which is no small feat. But they're still not doing a whole lot of damage, and it looks like Crown Abbott, however, does have enough of an army. He can just follow this up and be able to deal a lot of damage. Jumping back at 6.2 mark when the attack started, Nail does not have any change with tactics in the moment. He is jumping back even further to the 5.55 mark, about 30 seconds before the attack starts. He's getting another Mar tank. He needs to get another... He's getting tanks. He get, has another Macrofab from earlier in the past. That will be quite useful, but really, I'm not sure that Mar tanks... I mean, Mar tanks are a good idea, but Octopods were built in this setup to actually partly counter Mar tanks. 
which might actually be a bit overkill since the Octos are supposed to counter Martanks as well. But we'll see. A tank is coming in as well to help out. The Oddbots have run out of ammo, so they are going to be based on the recharge, three second recharge rate. So they're now a bit of a disadvantage. They did manage to snipe out the Martanks, which is quite useful. But one of the Octopods is now dead, another Octopod going down soon. The Reef is the main target of the Tornado right now, and Defense Turret is being built up, so Nail has jumped back, changed around his tactics a bit. He's building a Defense Turret near the attack. I don't think this will survive, though. And the Octopods are dealing a ton of damage to the mech. Kill the mech, the Defense Turret is up. The Defense Turret is attack helping to attack the Octo, not really attacking the Octopod. And it is now dead, so the Defense Turret really didn't do much. Might have slowed down some stuff a bit, but he actually had a pretty good setup. So, Nail... No, actually, the Octopods are coming in even closer, so the Octopods are dealing quite a bit of damage to Nail's main base, the Importers, and Kron Aberrant building up more Octopods, building up a larger army in his main base, a bunch of Seppies as well, and Faros. And Nail, at his expansion in the 10 o'clock position, isn't really building up too much. Really, that's where Macroing the present would be useful, be building up in that expansion at the very least. And also, this base does survive to the present at this point, even with the Octopod attacks. So Macron in the present, or near the present, even, wouldn't be a bad idea. Nail has one order left of Chrono Energy, and he doesn't really have much to do with it, so... I don't know exactly how that's going to help. I don't think it'll help. I... I like I said, he's got a macro in the present. He doesn't have enough Chrono Energy to do any macroing effectively in the past, or very little macroing in the past. And he has a ton of resources. He has a ton of LC, a fair amount of QP as well, and lots of macro fat is being built up. And the attack has been deflected. The Octopods were defended against, which is fine. More Octopods coming in, however. Chrono Aberrant has a massive Octopod army. Right now, the best counter would be air. A bunch of Tornads would probably be the best thing to do right now. Because that... Well, Tornads are... Okay, Tornads are QP heavy, so maybe that's the absolute best thing to do. But it would still be a pretty good idea. Possibly more Mars, just as an LC sync. And he does have the Macrofast for it right now. But that's... Because Nail has sort of painted himself into a corner at this point. And more Octopods coming up. Really, enough Martanks will be able to take this out. Probably about 10 or so Martanks will be able to just wipe this whole army out. But at the moment, there's only about two. No, there's only one. Not even one in production right now. At the 905 mark, where Nail was focused, no more in production. Oh no, one, one in production at the expansion. Nail jumped back to the 842 mark. And he is going to be having a huge army to deal with very shortly. And here's a special ups that was actually hanging out by the little beach area here. Has come up to start attacking the RPs. Kron Aberrant notices this, but I don't know if he's going to do anything about it. He will seem to on his time wave indicators, but he hasn't done anything yet. He is near the unplayable past. Just getting more RPs, or these must have been RPs from before. He is moving his forces towards that special ops, so defending his expansion. It's a pretty good idea. And a bunch of infantry coming in from Nail. Nail really wants to use these infantry. He's not backing down from the strategy, even though really right now Tornods would be a better idea. Octopods would just slaughter his infantry as they come through. Is this what, half a dozen Octopods now? No, at least half, there's at least half a dozen, looks like more like eight. And one Martang coming in here from Nail. Not really much more coming in. He has tons of resources though, he really could be further in the future and just macroing and macroing and macroing again, a massive army throughout the timeline, but he isn't doing those, so and that's kind of disappointing. Well, Kron Aberrant is doing so, and is getting a massive army. He still has a ton of resources, but he is getting a massive army. He could really use advanced structure, or he has advanced structure. He could use a spire, probably around here-ish. Transition to air. I mean, it's a little bit late to transition to air, but Nail isn't really punishing him for his heavy ground army. And he doesn't have anything to punish him for a heavy air army right now. So, really, Kron Aberrant can do whatever he wants. At the moment, Kron Aberrant's pretty free to do what he wants, while Nail has to find a way of getting rid of this ground army. And like I said, he doesn't have a lot to macro with right now, and a heavily damaged tank as well as main base doesn't help. But he doesn't have a lot to macro with. He has very little chrono energy, he has some Mars coming in from his bases. This is good, but still kind of slow going getting the Mars. He really could have more Mars more often if he had just macroed when, when the 1030 mark was over around this point in the time, when it was two minutes in the past. If he had macroed then, it would have been really easy. He would have had about ten orders, could have easily done all those macro fabs over and over, and then by this point in time, by the time 1049 went down to the Impilable Past, he would have had twice as many Mars easily, and at no risk. So I don't understand why he's not doing that, but I okay, I do understand why he's not doing it, because it is kind of intimidating to jump forward, being uncertain if everything you're doing is going to completely come crashing down, but there's a limit to how much things can come crashing down on you. 
because really, there's only so fast that your opponent can kill your base. Even with an uppercut, there's only so fast your base can die. So there's no point being that paranoid, especially when you can actually get rid of an uppercut by attacking it directly, chronally, as we saw in our last game, where Kron Aberrant defended Vermine's attack by doing so. Anyway, Kron Aberrant, speaking of him, has almost a dozen... Oh, so still eight Octopods, but he has at least a dozen Faros, a dozen Seppies, and he's very scary right now, very scary on the ground. No, he does have a dozen Octopods, actually, spread across the two bases. And Nail in their hand has gone for standard CISO expansion creep. I kind of missed this. I, I'm kind of surprised I missed this, actually. But yeah, he's going for standard CISO expansion creep. But he really needs to focus on macroing in the present if he wants to make the CISO. I know I keep iterating this. I keep saying this. I keep saying this. I keep saying this. Macro in the present. because in the, Or near the present. Even, heck, even a minute and a half in the past is still going to be pretty good for the amount of factories he has. But Nail is focusing heavily on the unplayable past. He does have a lot of Mar tanks, though. This is certainly a good amount of Mar tanks to defend against the Octopods. And the Tornado will also be useful. Not one Octopod coming forward to scout out, and the rest of the Octopods, the rest of the other dozen Octopods coming in from behind to help attack. This is when Nail needs to start attacking. The Mar tanks are coming in, the Octopods coming in. The infantry are actually keeping them busy a bit. And yeah, they run out of charges attacking the infantry they did, so a lot of the infantry died. But they managed to keep them busy while the Martanks are now dealing quite a bit of damage. Being able to hear the Octopods quite quickly, as I mentioned before, I predicted they'd be able to do. And oh, Nail actually moved them ahead when he was focused at this point in time. So he's moved the Martanks ahead. This is the battle actually went down. Martanks coming in, slaughtering the Octopods very rapidly. However, the Octopods are destroying the Martanks as well. Really, the only problem with the, Mar the Octopods right now is their positioning. They're all out of position as they came in. Well, the Martanks are all very much next to each other, meaning that the Martanks are able to obliterate the Octopods, even though the Octopods do have a bit of an advantage in terms of range and in terms of power. The Martanks are able to weather the attacks for the ammo for the Octopods, and now the Octopods are going to be going down. So, the Martanks, due to superior positioning, have managed to take out the Octopods. Kron Aberrant really had lost that due to inferior positioning. His units were streaming in. They weren't clumped up at all before they attacked. They were streaming in, going along here, so... Kron Aberrant now moving his forces north a bit to avoid the attack, and also to attack this base, realizing it exists. Attacking the base at the 4... No, not 4 o'clock, at the 2 o'clock position. The 12 o'clock position is still pretty open, pretty unsecured. 2 o'clock position is more secure, but the Octopods can deal enough damage that it won't matter. Octopods coming in from the front and back, it looks almost like two dozen Octopods. It isn't, it's only a dozen Octopods, but it's still very scary. Coming in, sniping out the factories, will be able to... Should be able to take care of the back factory. I think the front factory is going to be the Octos, but that got rid of it anyway. So, Nail losing the factories. Nail is jumping towards the present. I don't know if he's actually doing the Mac ring right now, but he is... Well, he does have Gate Tech. I don't know if he's going for Chrono Porter. I don't see a Chrono Porter around here anywhere. He has Symmetry in the pack. There, he doesn't have any Chrono Porters up that I can see. But he did jump towards the Impillable Pass to double check anything. I think he might be just double checking to figure out where to attack if he builds a Chrono Porter. But focusing at this point in time, he will not be able to build a Chrono Porter efficiently. Getting MFB and a Blackbird to heal up his Martanks, he looks to be likely to push out fairly soon. The Octopods, this is when they attacked that base. Chrono Aberrant is able to destroy the 2 o'clock base quite handily, while Nail focused heavily on the unplayable past edge. And he is going to be... Well, he has one order left. So getting his MFB and Blackbird up, healing up everything. Getting a Twin Mar as well with his one order. And Chrono Aberrant does have... Oh, he has chronoporting of his own. When does he actually have chronoporting? It looks like he has chronoporting at 1520 mark. Let's see if he actually uses it. I don't see him having used. No, he did. He? Oh, he must have. There's a chronoport departure, and I do not see where the departure was, unless it was right. No, he he had a chronoport departure. And I'll find out soon enough when we see sudden attacks coming in, and of course the chronoport T lines. But. There has been a Chronoport Departure. I don't see a Chronoporter for Nail. If looking at any of his bases, I don't see any Chronoporters. And Chronoaberrant also has Chronoporting, but Chronoaberrant doesn't need a Chronoporter to Chronoport. That's Greckham's little specialty there. So Nail will need to worry about this attack coming into his 2 o'clock expansion. Sorry. 10 o'clock expansion. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I grew up with digital clocks, okay? I'm trying to get analog in my head. But it is useful. Useful little means of referring to things. But yeah, he has the 10 o'clock expansion, and a Mar -tank, three Mar tanks actually are there. Nail will probably, is moving them forward to take out the Octopods, but this time he does not have a position advantage. 
the Mar tanks are mostly in his main base. He does have a bunch of tanks. He can turn them into heavy tanks if you wanted to. Not useful yet, but they would be useful if Karnamer decided to transition to air, which he never did. And Nail, look, he has 3,000, 2,500. I don't know why he's got so much. He really could... He should be spending all that. He's not spending enough of that. I mean, he, he would need, like, a dozen macrofabs and a dozen factories in order to spend all that. And even then, that'd be over a few cycles to spend all that. So jumping back to the 1648 mark, when the Mar tanks are in position, like I said, no position advantage. The Oshbods are in a great spot right now, although they are running out of ammo. They're still quite powerful against the Mar tanks. Oh, but the Mar tank here has a position advantage right now. The Oshbods are a bit out of position to attack it. And it's also behind the Macrofab, but ultimately the Oshbods can see it and can attack it. So the Mar tank dealing fair amount of damage, but unfortunately not enough. And here we go. There it is. The Octopods were chronoported back. Attacking the north. Chronoported back to attack the north base. And also chronoporting back to uppercut the 10 o'clock base. So the 10 o'clock base is going to be heavily damaged. Now, of course, <laughs> despite Nail's comment of stupid uppercuts, he can do the same thing. He has great gate tech of his own. He can build a chronoporter. He could build... I could send back all his units. He has a ton of QP to do. I mean, he's... Look at this. At the present, he has 4,000, 4,000. I'm surprised he isn't spending it just going and... Just grabbing the macro and just tapping whatever his Martank hockey is. Anyway, back to 1722 mark. I see a Chrono Porter! There we go! A Chrono Porter is being built! Hooray! We have a Chrono Porter. Alright, so. The Octobots coming into the north base, the, not the north base, the 10 o'clock base. They're dealing a ton of damage and now the Chrono pointing back. So that would be about the right time to actually attack the base, but. I don't know if Nail is going to attack then. Two heavy tanks being set up, a couple, a twin Mar, a couple Mars, and the other Mars are a bit out of position, however. But yeah, he can chronoport all these guys back, no problem, near the present, just jump back to about this point in time, and go for a double attack. Just try to slaughter this entire army with a bunch of Mars and tanks and their chrono clones. He'd need a few more Mars to make this work, but I think once he gets that, it should work fine. Anyway, more chronoporting coming back from Crown Aberrant. And this is when the uppercut, of course, ultimately happened. I'm just seeing between the re to try to, to obviously re and get more units in there, a better advantage. So the 10 o'clock base is basically forfeit. However, it did manage to harvest a lot of resources. As a production base, however, is, is unfortunate that he's lost it. Nail does need more production. He needs more... Well, you see, he needs more macrofab. He has a ton of resources. He Even with the chrono energy, he won't be able to spend it all. And he has a chrono porter, and I'm not sure why he isn't using it. Anyway, 10 o'clock base, a tank is just outside, approaching the beach of the 10 o'clock base, it isn't going to be able to do too much, while Crown Aberrant further towards the present, building up more octopods, really focused, he has not built a spire this entire game. Grecon player has not built a spire the entire game. Now, of course, once again, we are still experimenting with this little mod, this little balance mod that I mentioned before, but still, this is... Pretty in interesting. The fact that Crown Aberrant sees it necessary not to build any air units. They can just work with base class and octopods. And clearly he's right, because Nail is not setting up the units to punish him. He isn't setting up a lot of air units of his own. I think Nail is a bit afraid of getting a counter against the air, although it would take a little while to build. I think Nail is afraid of that. And it, also, I think the time has gone down. But a TSS from the Chrono Porter. So that's all he was using it for? Really? I, I'm kind of surprised he's only using it for TSS. I mean, I know Nail has mentioned in the past that he doesn't really like chronoporting. He finds, he thinks it has no real effect. With the amount of units he has, I don't understand. I, I am confused because he really could use that chronoporting. He could just go back and just counter the chrono shenanigans with some more chrono shenanigans of his own. And at least push put a lot of pressure onto Chrono Aberrant. He does have the resources for it, he can easily chronoport the entire army back, they go for the attack, come back, chronoport, whatever, but... Or build a chronoporter in the middle of the maps with the mechs. I mean, the chronoporters could be built around here-ish, or on this little expansion, on this little section here. There's a lot of places to build it that would be relatively safe. Kind of surprised he isn't doing that. But like I said, Nail isn't a huge fan of chronoporting. He is a, obviously a, enough of a fan of TSS to use it, and it is a good ability to have, but... I'm just surprised he isn't going for the chronoporting, never going for the chronoporting, because of course he knows Kron Aberrant can do that. So Kron Aberrant now taking care of the north base, and that will be fairly trivial to do. Obviously he took care of the north base, as I mentioned before, he took care of the north base earlier, 
but now he's just finishing it off. So at this point, Cron Aberrant has completely seized map control from Nail, and another departure has occurred. Cron Aberrant, Cron reporting back a bunch of units to basically uppercut the north base at the same time he was attacking the 10 o'clock base. No other attacks though, but there. Well, there is some defense force here, but I think Nail is able to take care of it anyway. Yeah, Nail took care of it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Cron Aberrant is moving all of his RPs towards the newly, well, not only newly free 2 o'clock base, but that was free a little while ago, and he can easily grab a bunch of the other bases too. So now, map control is in Cron Aberrant's hands. He doesn't have it yet, but he can easily acquire it. He does have enough units that he can basically go anywhere on the map, chronoport back, and apply pressure that way. So he has a lot of soft pressure going on, but he doesn't actually have a lot of places on the map that he decidedly controls. He just sort of has the entire map pressure. And like I said, I'm just surprised there isn't a chronoporting going on to try to get rid of this. Anyway, whoa, I missed something here. Nail is going to be coming in, attacking the main base from the beach. Yeah, he's coming in, attacking from the beach side. Will be dealing a ton of damage to the Mar tanks, leading the pack with the heavy tank in the back and the twin Mar on the tail. And looks like getting rid of these RPs is going to be quite effective. Once the heavy tanks are attacking, at least the heavy tanks are more focused on the ground units. Getting rid of one of the reefs, and we'll be soon getting rid of one of the other reefs, and I'm guessing these octopuses will be chronoporting back to defend against this attack pretty soon. So really, Nail can't be too confident about this, but still. He is able to, at this point, in the middle fast, destroy Cryamarin's base, but Cryamarin is... No, he's not attacking the main base of Nail. So Cryamarin really needs to come back here, chronoport back his units, and get rid of the army, but he doesn't have any Sepi Pods. That's the thing, T TSS is only breakable by Sepi Pods for Grekum. Which means that without Sepi Pods, he won't be able to actually get rid of the TSS right now. Which is kind of embarrassing that he never got air units. So I th he does have a dome up here, and he has a bunch of Octopods, but he has no, he has Faros. Really needs to build an Arcticus. I can't believe this is happening. It, the tables have completely turned. Nail has managed to keep enough production going in his base to actually attack Cron Aberrant directly. Cron Aberrant took Cron Port back to defend a bit, but even then, at the moment, he really doesn't have a lot of units to do this with. He has Faros, he can Cron Port them back, turn them into Arcticuses, or just turn them into Arcticuses now. That's his only hope right now. I, I'm i a bit surprised. Nail, I mean, okay, I'm not totally surprised since Nail was producing constantly. I'm just a bit surprised that Nail didn't do this sooner. Because it would have also motivated Cron Aberrant to push for air, but I'm also going to surprise Cron Aberrant didn't transition to air sooner. I mean, Bunch of Mar tanks, and he didn't get any, he didn't get any Far Legos or Far Pods or anything like that. I'm a bit surprised at that. Anyway, it looks like Cron Aberrant is going to be completely destroyed. By this here's the Arcticus, and I mentioned. I'm guessing very quickly we'll see some units popping out of there. Cron Aberrant also appears to be chronoporting. No, he's not chronoporting back at all. He is going to. Well, he's double checking there, and oh, he didn't mean to build a chronoport. He meant to build a teleporter. That's why all his units are sitting here. Well, oh no, he's building a second one. He's building a second chronoporter and another teleporter. Mind you, two chronoporters isn't a bad thing if you're chronoporting. Because it means that you can have chronoports soon, one after the other without having to worry about recharges. But he does have a teleporter and will be able to teleport towards Cron Aberrant now. Cron Aberrant, near the unplayable pass, he doesn't have a lot of units to defend with. He does have a lot of octopods and such, but those are the ones that march their deaths. And yeah, Cron Aberrant realizes there's no way that he can actually get out of this. And GG's. Oh right, so I kind of pointed out, domes are also useful for TSS, and yes, extra chronoports, I know they're useful for TSS, but also pointing out they are useful for chronoporting, and usually if I'm going for chronoport heavy strategy with CISO, I will build two chronoporters to avoid any recharge delays. So I think the main problem was that Cron Aberrant did not transition to air, did not transition to Octoligo, did not transition to anything but the Octopods, and really cool strategy in the early game, but it didn't pan out because the Mars just out-pressured them. But then from the air, the Mars would have been destroyed, and then nice little mix of units would have made it more even. So anyway, very interesting game. Well done by Nail on that comeback there. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, that was another game. I don't know if we're going to have another one if you want to test this out. But at least Karn Aberrant seemed to have enjoyed it. He said as much, anyway. So, yeah, by the way, this is actually being streamed live.
I'm just I'm still kind of surprised Nail didn't at least chronophore part of his units to just support themselves in the past, that sort of thing. I mean, okay, yeah, it's kind of hard to avoid chronofragging, but you just jump in the past, scout it out, jump forward, chronoport back, that sort of thing. It's usually not too difficult. But anyway. Yes, yes it will, Doc. Because I went through a ton of effort to put those that IRC client in every single page in the main menu. I want to make sure that it's obvious that it's what's going on here. So yeah. Also, it's really easy when I'm doing stream to actually show what's going the chat that's going on because I don't have an easy way to show the Twitch TV chat. But now I have an easy way to show the IRC chat for Akron. I'm quite glad of this. Anyway, I'm just going to drop the video for now, and I'm not sure if we'll be back later. If we are back later, it'll be because there's more games. Otherwise, just drop the video for now, and if I don't see you guys again, have a good night.